Welcome back to the Midyear Mitch YouTube channel. Today's episode, we're continuing the restoration on the 68 Corvette by taking the body off the chassis. We're gonna pull the engine out and start to disassemble the chassis to get that out the powder coating and get all the major components rebuilt. So be sure to stick around. I'm about ready to lift the body on the 68 Corvette, but there's a problem. This old girl is in the way. Some parts are back ordered. Uh, so we're just gonna have to push this into the other garage. And we got the steering hooked up, so that'll make it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna push this girl into the other garage and we can turn 68 sideways, undo all the body mounts, and get our lifting rig over here hooked up. Then we can pick the body up straight up. So I should have everything removed that connects the body to the chassis except for the body mounts. So I removed the rocker panels, I removed the e-brake cable that went into the car, and then there were a couple straps that went from the inner seat belt mounts uh, and attached to the frame. So all that's removed, now I have the back end jacked up so that way I can get access to the body mount back in here. And then there's one behind a little cover right here. So I don't wanna pull the wheel off, get access to those, Inside the car, there's a body mount like right here. There's another one right here. And then there's one that connects the core support to the chassis. So I have all four wheels off and she's on skates and she's not just low, you know. She's low, low. I took measurement from the rocker to the floor while it was on skates uh, with the wheels on and now without the wheels. We dropped about six inches. So it's quite a bit lower than it is at factory ride height. So we need all the height we can get because our rigging is gonna be about to here. And then you can see how low our hoist hangs. So we're only gonna have a couple feet of lift. And then once you're trying to clear a big old big block. So you can see I already have the carbs off which gives us a little bit of a height advantage. I'll probably pull the distributor off because that's the highest thing in here because we need to skate the chassis out either through the wheel well or underneath the front. Um, but now I need to pull the hood off and I'll probably use the chain hoist to help me because I'm alone right now. So I'll just have to use the hoist to support the hood, take off the hood prop and then put some tape on here, take off the hood bolts and then we should just be able to up, up and away, get the hood off of here. So I shuffled the 68 to the middle of the garage so I had room to work on the chassis here. So now I think the first order of business is let's work on getting this big block out of here. We've got to cut what's left of the exhaust off, get the drive shaft out, disconnect the fuel line, pull the engine out, then we can get the transmission off, bell housing, clutch, all that stuff. And then the fun stuff begins. We've got to get these coil springs out, take apart the whole front suspension, take apart the rear suspension. So I cut the exhaust off and look at the pile of stuff that came out of particularly the driver's side. The passenger side had some, not as much. Um, but if you remember when I took the mufflers out, it was also full. So the whole entire exhaust system was just full of rust and rodents. So that's a little concerning. Hopefully they didn't climb, you know, in there. The inside of the engine looked fine, so I think it should be okay, but a little sketchy. We got the fuel pump off. So that way we could get into the engine mount bolts.
I got the coil spring out on the driver's side and sure enough, it still has its original tag on it. So this is a real F41 spring. So that's kind of neat. They were never swapped out, unfortunately the shocks were. So I'll give you guys a quick rundown of how I remove these. So I take a normal spring compressor and I get rid of the floating side of it. And I just use the threaded end and the rod. I drop the rod down through where the shock goes and I fish this hook up here and down through the shock hole. But I fish it in here and you try to get it as low to the spring as you can or as low on the spring to the control arm as you can. So you have the most pulling power. I put a little bit of tension on it just with a ratchet so that way the spring there's a little bit of pressure off of it you can get a floor jack underneath it next you want to break your upper ball joint loose so you want to take the cotter pin out bring the nut down just a little bit to give you some room with some pressure still on the spring bring your fork and you're going to want to break that ball joint loose and you want to have you know some thread still on there so that way this doesn't just come exploding apart all at once um, and then i put some tension on the bolt, removing tension from the control arm, and then I lowered the floor jack and removed the nut here just to bring this assembly down slowly. Then you can start to take pressure off of your coil spring compressor until it's unloaded. These springs are pretty short, so it doesn't take a whole lot to get them out. I removed both the coil springs without any problems. So now it's time to take the rest of the suspension apart. I'm gonna start off by getting the upper control arms off of here. And instead of just unbolting them um, and dealing with getting this cross shaft out of here later, I'm gonna try something different and try to take these bushings out while it's still on the chassis. So now I'm gonna jump onto the rear suspension. I need to remove the rear sway bar, and then I need to start removing the rear spring. So the rear spring connects directly to the bottom of the trailing arm with a bolt. A lot of time that, that bolt is rusty. And I'm gonna use the floor jack to push up on it. And most likely what I'll end up doing is just cutting this bolt. A lot of times I really don't like to come off. So go ahead and get the bolts off, get the rear spring out. Then we can start working on pulling the half shafts out, the strut rods, the shocks. So I removed the leaf spring, we removed the half shafts, the brake calipers, sway bar, and then I took the cam bolts loose. Now those decided to wage war on me. Uh, they just decided to snap right off. So I just had to get in there and get at it with the air hammer and get a little creative to get those off. And you can tell that they haven't been adjusted for a long time because one, they broke, but two, these strut rods are bent. So somebody decided to adjust the alignment by just bending the bar, which I guess a lot of people did back in the day. Now it's time to take off both trailing arms. Now these ones are gonna be fun um, because a lot of times the bolt rusts to the inside of the bushing and then you can't get the bolt out, which I can't imagine how you would do this with the body on. Luckily we have the body off. So I need to take this nut off. Hopefully we get lucky and we can just drive this bolt out on both sides, probably not. Um, if we can't, then we're probably just gonna have to cut the head or the end of the bolt off and try to drive it out, or we're gonna have to get in there with a sawzall. It, it doesn't get fun from here if that's, if that's what this car decides to do to me. So we'll see. Uh, the shims are, well, they're pretty well wedged in there. We're, gonna, we're just gonna get after it, see, and see what happens here. Hopefully they, 
they work out okay. So I removed the rear suspension, I took the brake lines, fuel lines, all that stuff off. The only thing that is left is this differential cross member here. So I dropped the frame down onto a skate so that way I could remove the rear end and then I picked the frame up, skated that out of the way. Now this little cross member here is a little bit of a pain in the neck to remove. It just has these two bolts that hold it in each side, um, but there's a giant rubber cushion that goes around a little like post on the frame and well it doesn't want to come off so i have a puller on that side i've sprayed a bunch of juice in there put some heat in there to try to soften up the bushings um, but playing nice didn't work so i just i guess we're just going to hit it harder with a hammer uh, hopefully that breaks it free we'll give that a try uh, if not well i'm not sure what we're going to do i got to take this thing to powder coating today so i got to get this cross member out Okay, update. Hitting it with a big hammer does work. Just gotta hit it a little bit harder. I wasn't, wasn't sending it enough. So if we flip this guy over, you can see it's got like a little cup design here and there's the pad that it slides into and it just, it just becomes one after, you know, quite a few years. The next thing to do on the chassis is I did find a little bit of rust. There's a little hole, once I started poking around, I saw all this dirt falling out of it. I started poking around and sure enough, I found a little hole. So you probably could, you know, just try to tack weld that up, put a little patch in there. I've seen people put a piece of plastic over this just to try to hide it. What we're gonna do is, is bring the plasma cutter in. We're just gonna cut this whole piece out. Hopefully it's not too rusty to cut. Um, we'll cut this piece out and then I'll clean it up with the grinder and then we'll make a new piece, weld that in. There's a little bit of a hole at the bottom. I wanted the rear cap in place. I plasma cut the old one out then I had to come in here with grinder and different sanders to remove the weld and to get the other one to fit uh, really well. So I know you can buy these reproduction. I just didn't have one on hand. Took a few minutes to whip up and I think it turned out pretty decent. There was a little hole I had to fix underneath here as well. This body mount over here was not cooperating. When I went to break it free in the car, it just spun. So I had to cut the head off. And well, it's just, we're not gonna get that bolt out because the cage nut is just spinning freely because the cage is broken. So. Nice thing about having a local Corvette shop is I can run over there because I didn't order one. I can just run over and grab one. So on a C2, these pedestals are taller. You can kind of get in there and cut the old cage off, weld a new one in. Problem with the C3 ones is they're a lot lower to the frame, which is, you know, good low profile. Um, but you really just, you can't access the underside of this. So what I'm gonna have to do is cut the welds uh, of this free this up, I need to take some measurements to make sure we get it in the exact spot that it was. Pull the pedestal off, cut the old cage off with this bolt, weld a new cage on, and then we're good to go. So I've got to hurry up and do this and get this thing loaded up and take it to the powder coater. So now the chassis is fully repaired, torn apart and it's ready to go to powder coating. So now I need to move all the stuff that's in front of this, get this thing loaded up in a truck, hurry up and drop this off at the powder coater. And hopefully we'll be able to take the engine over to the builder today as well. So I got a lot of stuff to move. So let's get this thing loaded up. So I took the chassis to the powder coater and the engine over to the engine builder and I left a little bit of a mess. There's just 
Well, there's stuff just everywhere right now. So I need to start cleaning up and I still have one more trip to make. I need to take that front end to storage. And I also need to put center field. Can you see it? Center field right there. Right there. I need to put that back in here. So I need to make room. So I got to start sweeping, putting some tools away, organizing, get that car back in here, take that front end. And then, whew, that's gonna be a wrap on an action-packed day. All right, that looks a little bit better. I have the parts kind of categorized and tucked back in here. And it looks pretty decent for now. I still need to go through and finish taking stuff apart. The shop's put back to normal. Center field sitting here in the garage. And I think the 68's in a good spot. Right now the engine is at the builders. They said they'll take a look at it and determine what it needs from here. So it's in good hands. The chassis should be back in a couple days. And I'm just gonna leave all these sub assemblies here put together. I'll deal with each one of these later as I get the time, but I think now we're gonna jump on center field. So the next video, we're gonna hopefully get this thing running and driving and get this thing ready to go home so we can make some space because we have a 65 coupe coming. So I need to make a lot of room for that. And then we also need to make room so we can put this car back together. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And we have a lot of work to do. So I'll catch you guys later.